with a name that made your everyday consumer think it was a accessory to the Wii, to the poor marketing and bad launch lineup, the Wii U was destined to fail from day one. But nevertheless, I needed Nintendo's newest console. I didn't get a Wii U until March 2014, on my ninth birthday, and although I had fun with the games I had at the time, I still found myself going back to the Wii, Xbox 360, or an even older console because of the lack of fun games. However, when I started to get new games that summer, and then go to p pick up Mario Kart 8 on the weekend of its release later that year, I started to appreciate the system. But it wasn't until the end of that year, when I got Smash 4 on day one at my local Toys R Us, and from there to uh, Guy Games throughout 2015, even though there were plenty of droughts from the lack of third party, I had begun to really love my Wii U, and I still play it to this game, to this day. <laughs> Now, even though uh, anyone who even thought about buying the Wii U has is now focused on the Nintendo Switch, the question still remains, which are the best Wii U games to buy? Well, I'm Silver's Channel, and this is my top 5 Wii U games. Now, keep in mind, this is all my opinion, and I haven't played every Wii U game. So, if there was one you thought it should have been on the list, feel free to tell me it your list in the comments below and now without further ado here is my number five wii u game and then my number five spot is super mario 3d world this is one of my first wii u games and i loved it it was much better than new super mario bros u i remember playing this game all day with my friends the day after school third grade ended and it was a blast. The power, the power-ups, the collectibles, the amount of playable characters—it was all great. Especially Rosalina. I'm looking at you, Mario the Plumber. The, I mean, would a game that made Bowser a cat? How can you say no? My number four would have to be Super Mario Maker. I got this game the day it came out, along with the sixth wave of Super Smash Bros. Amiibos, which I also did a, a boxing of on my channel. You should check that out. But I didn't make up the funnest levels when I first got it. I got online and saw how much awesomeness the community could make though, and and I knew I had truly found a game with endless play replayability. Well, until Nintendo cuts down the Wii U's and 3DS's networks, which will probably happen around after the Switch comes out, so that's not so good. But it did have Amiibo in it, so I could play characters like Sonic that in a Mario game. Now that's awesome. Anyway, time for number three. The number three on my list is Mario Kart 8. Now I know someone is already commenting, now Silver Channel, this is not a good list because all it is is Mario games. Well, before you do that, number one, it's not my fault that they haven't used their other series such as a Metroid Prime 4, a Kid, Icar or a Kid Icarus 2, and number two, it is not my fault there is pretty much no third party games on the system and last of all at number 3 my uh, my 1 and 2 on the list are not Mario games so calm down okay okay as i said i picked up Mario Kart 8 the weekend it came out and i can't count how many times i played it with my family or friends since from the new tracks uh, to the zero gravity mechanic to the DLC putting Link, Villager, and Isabel in a Mario Kart game, it, this game was amazing, and possibly my favorite in the series. And with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe giving us a battle mode, Splatoon's Inklings, and the ability to play this on the go, I can't wait for, to buy this game again in a couple of months on the Nintendo Switch. P.S. I was a little rusty when making this gameplay, uh, gameplay for this anyway. Here is number two. A number two on the list is the ever so famous Splatoon. Now, Splatoon was the first time since Pikmin on the GameCube that Nintendo tried a completely new, completely fresh IP, a brand new idea, and they had a hit on their hands. But it would have not just been a hit, but a huge hit if it if it wasn't on the Wii U, which is why I think Splatoon 2 is going to do so well on the Nintendo Switch. Nevertheless, Splatoon has a giant growing fan base to this day. And the game is about these half squid and half kid creatures called Inklings who love to play sports they have to do with shooting ink from guns at each other and swimming through said ink. When the game first released, it didn't have much other than a few stages, one game mode, and a story mode, 
about the fight between the Inklings and the Octolings, which showed off the game's mechanics perfectly, but it wasn't enough to make it a full-fledged game. I got the game day one, as I said, and it turned it, and it turned it off after only a few hours. However, Nintendo was constantly putting uh, out updates, including new weapons, game modes, and these things called Splatfest, which are events that would happen on the weekends where you could pick a side, whether it was SpongeBob or Patrick, hot dogs or hamburgers, or Pokemon Red and po or Pokemon Blue, and try to get uh, your team the most points. These stop happening, but are expected to come back in Splatoon 2. In this game, you can pick a an inkling boy or an inkling girl, buy them clothes to stay fresh, and buy the weapons of your choice. The types of weapons include shooters, which are pretty much guns that shoot out at, at a very high speed with no charge, rollers, which are literally giant paint rollers that you can cover the ground with paint, with, as well as slam into your enemies, and chargers, which are basically which are basically s snipers. You charge them up and then let out a giant line of paint. And then there are brushes, which are literally paint brushes. There's nothing to per, uh, special to them. But personally, I prefer shooters. For those who don't know how this game, how the game modes work, there are Turf Four, Tower Control, and Rainmaker. Turf Four is where you have is where you um or your team has to cover the most turf with with paint in a certain amount of time tower control is having a tower in the stage covered with your ink until the time until it gets to the base excuse me and rainmaker is where your team has to grab the rainmaker weapon in the middle of the stage and deliver it to the base before the opponent uh, the your opponents take it from you and deliver it to their base Overall, this is an amazing game. I'm definitely getting Splatoon 2 day one, but now it's time for what you've all been waiting for, the number one on the list. And my personal number one game for the Nintendo Wii U is Super Smash Bros. for Wii U. And who didn't see this coming? I mean, someone in the comments is going to say that the number one was obvious, and that's because Smash is awesome, and it was obvious. I got Brawl for my Wii one Christmas when I was really young and I loved it. Even though I didn't know how to grab or use shields because I was using a Wii remote and I was really stupid back then. But anyway, as soon as I saw that there was a fourth installment in the series coming to 3DS and Wii U, I was immediately begging my parents for a Wii U since I had neither systems at the time and I wanted to play the definitive version of the game. And... Every, every day, I would wake up and see Sakurai's new pick of the day. In the day, uh, I saw Sonic was coming back uh, as a veteran. I nearly had a heart attack out of, assignment, uh, out of excitement. I am definitely not a competitive player of this game, as you can see from the gameplay. And am a pocket cloud main. Sorry, all you haters. But it doesn't mean I don't love me some competi competitive challenge competition in this game against uh, just about anyone. Just late last year, I beat everyone that came up to me in a game room at my local Comic Con with Cloud. And just for the record, since I don't have a GameCube adapter, I use a Wii, uh, Wii U Classic controller that's made in the shape of a GameCube controller. And it's a Zero Suit Samus Edition. You should, uh, if you about that, you should check my unboxing video on my channel. But even though there aren't many modes with replayability, Thanks to there being no subspace or adventure mode, the amount of characters more more than makes up for it. I mean, 58 characters! After Brawl having only 39, that's amazing. Overall, it, it has a great competitive scene, a great roster, awesome gameplay, and a good community. It is, it is a Nintendo's fan's dream game, which is why it is my number one Wii U game. And that's the end of the list. Did you agree? What would you have changed? Let me know in the comments below. And if you liked the video, feel free to give it a like and, a, and subscribe. And if you are actually wanting to see when I upload, hit that bell. It means a lot. I will hopefully be getting a Nintendo Switch very soon. Hopefully day one. So be expecting a lot more con content that you will not want to miss if you're a Nintendo fan. 
and if you're not a Nintendo fan, don't worry, I will be do my best to start rolling out my Dragon Ball content once again. I was sick, so I kind of had a break on it, and I apologize for that. But until then, if you want to play with me on um, on other systems other than Nintendo Switch, including PS4, Nintendo 3DS, and of course the Nintendo Wii U, the topic of today, well, my PlayStation Network, 3DS friend code, and Wii U NID, or Nintendo Network ID, are in the description below, as well as on my channel banner, and what, so, um, be sure to check those out, and yeah, this is the first time I've tried to do a more big video, and do it by script, and I tried to go through it really fast, just so I would be able to, uh, not make this video extremely long, and I was, um, on a deadline here, I was really trying to get this out before March 3rd, so, you know, this will probably be uploaded the night, March 2nd, but, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and, I, and, that is pretty much the end of it, if you, I'll see you guys next time, and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day, peace.